Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with my November wrap-up. I read 11 books in November, which I think is in part due to the fact that I did start a job, my boyfriend started a new job, so we're both working new jobs at different hours, so I have a lot more alone time than I did before. And also, I've gotten more into the swing of like working and going in and like having free time and actually having to use that free time instead of just stare at the wall for three hours because I know I'm not gonna have to do anything later. So I'm very happy with what I read in November. The first book that I read was Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This is the first book in the Expanse series, which is a space opera that spans at least nine books. I believe the ninth is coming out next year, and then there may or may not be more after that. This is about Captain James Holden, who is an XO on a water freighter that takes water from the inner planets like Earth out to the asteroid belt where people live and there are no natural resources there. Then his ship is exploded and he's trying to figure out who exploded his ship and killed all his people. And the other main character is Joseph Miller, who is a belter cop. He's trying to track down a missing woman and send her back to her family. The two kind of collide as they realize that their goals become one and the same by the end of the book. And it's very political. There's a struggle between like Earth and the inner planets and the belter planets and like independence. There's a lot of discussion on just politics in general. It's very interesting. It was a fun time. I gave this four stars and thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't read much sci-fi, so I am talking about this from a non-sci-fi reader perspective, but I thought it was great fun. I do think that I enjoyed the James Holden chapters more than I enjoyed the Joseph Miller chapters, although I think I liked Joseph Miller's character more. It just felt like Holden's chapters kind of progressed the story forward more than the Miller chapters did. But I really enjoyed this book. I picked it up after watching the show, which I also really enjoyed. Um, not my kind of thing at all, but I have been trying to branch more into sci-fi, so glad I picked it up. Definitely plan on continuing the series soon. Then I continued on with the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter. I read a bunch of these in October. If you saw that wrap-up, I read like four or five in October. And then I just decided to continue on and eventually finish it. So the next book in the Will Trent series is Fallen. I believe this is book five in the Will Trent series. I gave this three stars. It's a cop thriller series that's centered around special agent Will Trent, who is a severely dyslexic detective who investigates crimes with his partner Faith Mitchell and his girlfriend Sarah Linton. I don't know what else to say about these books. I don't particularly like the main characters in them. I think what Karen Slaughter does really well is create really unlikable characters, just like detestable human beings. But you know, when you have a lot of detestable human beings, sometimes it gets a little unpleasant to read. And I do think that's kind of why I dislike this one more. The mystery aspect of it, the crime they're investigating, is personally related to one of the detectives. Faith's mother goes missing and they have to find out who kidnapped her. And I do think that made me dislike this book a little bit more. So this was a three star read for me, but in general the series has mostly been four stars. And then I read Criminal, which is the next book in the series. I gave this four stars. I don't know really what to say about these books. They just continue on in the series. The main characters get new crimes, they investigate those new crimes, and then they figure out who the perpetrators are. And I really enjoyed this one. This one does have more of a historical fiction aspect, which I wasn't the biggest fan of, just because I don't think I particularly enjoy either cop thrillers that are historical fiction or just Karen Slaughter's way of writing historical fiction in general. This is the second book she's written that has a historical fiction element that I've read, and I didn't particularly enjoy either of those elements. But that being said, I did really enjoy the rest of this book. It was a fun ride. I really recommend the series. And then I read Unseen, which is the next book in the Will Trent series. There's just one more of these before we move on to other things. But I gave this four stars. This brought back one of my favorite characters in the series, who is Lena Adams. I really like Lena's character. I think she's a very det detestable person, but in a way that works really well for the story. And I really love the dynamic that she brings to these books because she sucks as a human, but she's not like evil or a bad person. She just kind of sucks. And it's it was really interesting to me, and I just really enjoy her dynamic in general. So yeah, again, recommend. This is probably one of my top three books in the series. And then we have The Kept Woman, which I think is book eight in the series. This focuses on 
Will Trent and his wife slash potentially ex-wife slash potentially estranged wife. I'm not really sure of what their relationship is. I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it, regardless of what that relationship is. It's very interesting. It's very dark. I really enjoy Karen Slaughter, and I'm just kind of at the point where her books are largely the same, and not in like a bad way, but just in a way where it's hard to kind of generally summarize my vague thoughts because my vague thoughts are pretty much the same throughout. She's a great writer. She has really interesting stories. I'm very easily engrossed in her stories and her writing style. Her main characters are not great. None of her characters are great, but in that way that not because they're not fully developed, they're just not likable human beings. Sometimes it works and sometimes it falls sort of on the side of irritation where I want to root for someone and there's no one to root for. But again, really enjoy this series. This is probably my favorite cop thriller series that I have read thus far. And then I continued reading John Krakauer with Three Cups of Deceit. This is a very short 75 about page book, if you could call it a book, about Greg Mortensen, who wrote Three Cups of Tea and the subsequent memoirs. He's a humanitarian. He used to be the CEO or the lead person of the Central Asia Institute, which is a charity nonprofit organization that builds schools in the Middle East. This is basically John Krakow writing a book to expose him for being corrupt and lying and stealing money and every bad thing you could imagine someone who leads a nonprofit of doing. I gave this three stars, which I think is a fairly generous rating. Um, there was not much in this book for me. It mostly got three stars because I've read a bunch of Krakauer as a nonfiction author, and I do have a great deal of trust in him as an author. So like, because I've read so many of him before, that really does help me give this book the benefit of the doubt. And also, this was clearly not written for me as like the intended audience, so it's hard to be too harsh on it. I don't recommend reading this book unless you're already invested in Greg Mortensen or that charity, or you're just like really interested in knowing because I vaguely heard of him before but didn't really know who he was. I, I knew of the person and the role that they were discussing, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you that Greg Mortensen was that person. I'd heard of the books, the charity, his corruption kind of, I guess, if you could call it that. Basically, John Krakauer donated a bunch of money to this organization, like upwards of $75,000. And then he kind of figured out that Greg Mortensen was lying a little bit, embellishing some truths, using some of the nonprofits organization for his book tour and like promoting his book. All very questionable things. So he decided to expose him and Krakauer really hates this guy if you can go by his writing. I couldn't summon that kind of hate. It kind of seemed to me that Mortensen was just incompetent. That He was a nurse who tried to build a school in I forget where the first school was, somewhere in the Middle East, and then he wound up getting a lot of donations and more publicity and it kind of kept spiraling until he was the leader of this huge nonprofit organization who raked in millions and millions of dollars and it was out of his control and like he didn't know how to head up an organization like that and he didn't hire people who did and he just sucked at managing people and sucked at managing money. and. After this book and like several other investigations and such, he was forced to step down and like return a million or two million dollars to the organization. I don't remember, but I, I don't really have many feelings about this book. It was fine. Like, I, I'd give it a pass unless you're particularly interested in Greg Mortensen and his corruption. I finally read The Hate You Give by Andrew Thomas. I buddy read this with Abby Mac Reads, who I will link down below. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. This is the story of Star, who witnesses her friend being killed by the police at a traffic stop. He's unarmed, and there is a lot of publicity, and Star is kind of trying to deal with this and reconcile with herself who she is because she lives in a very poor, very black part of town that sees a lot of violence, a lot of gangs, but the school she goes to is very affluent and very white. And she kind of has two different personas at both. Her friend's murder really forces her to combine those and figure out who she is. I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I don't have super much to say about it just because everyone else has already said all the positive things there are to say about this book. The characters in this are wonderful. Angie Thomas does a really good job with character voice and just character development in general. It was all really well done. I'm not going to talk about the race elements in this being as how I am white and 
I really have nothing to say on that, apart from I really enjoyed reading it. The reason this was four stars instead of five, it was so fast paced and just like I'd blink and two or three scenes would go by and I really really wished it had slowed down and it seemed like towards the end there was more of like a pacing issue, like not not really badly, it was just like it got very jumpy and it felt more disjointed and didn't flow super smoothly at the end and I just really wish this whole book had been slowed down because I'm a very slow paced book kind of person. I don't really like how fast paced some books are and this one was very fast paced but I loved it. I was engrossed. I actually read a fair bit ahead of Abby just because I didn't want to put it down. Like I was just, I read like the, past, the last 200 pages at once just because I was enjoying it so much. So if you haven't already picked this book up, I, I do highly recommend it. I think it's a wonderful book and I definitely plan to read more from Angie Thomas. And then I read The Last Widow by Karen Slaughter, which is the ninth and final book in the Will Trent series to date. There are going to be more, the series is not over, but this one was the most recent that has been published. It was published in 2019 and there will be another next year that I am very excited about. Like I said earlier, don't have too much to say about this one just because it's more Karen Slaughter. I've talked about her book so many times. I do have a full review on this coming soon, hopefully, where I discuss the series as a whole and each individual book more in depth. But this one I did enjoy, but I gave it three stars. I didn't like the storytelling decisions that she made in this one so much. It does kind of have overlapping timelines and that's a big part of what the book focuses on and how she's telling the story. For example, the story might start with Will Trent and Will Trent's perspective goes from 12.30 p.m. until 1 p.m. and it's just th that 30 minutes of his life are described and then the next character's point of view will be Sarah and Sarah's goes from 12.40 p.m. until 1.10 p.m. and she's just describing that 30 minutes of her life and the next perspective will be Faith and Faith's timeline will go from 12.50 p.m. until 1.20 p.m. and it'll just be her 30 minutes of life and there was a lot of like overlapping timelines like that and I do understand what she was going for but I think it got irritating for me when I realized the whole book was going to be like that or not all of it but she kind of lost that about like halfway or two-thirds into the book but that was how the first at least half of the book was told and I did find that irritating but again I really like her writing style I love the way she describes things I just find it so easy to get fully immersed in her stories and just I pick one up and I care about that story immediately until I get to the end so even though I gave the last one three stars that was I think one of two three star ratings that I gave in the series and the rest were four stars and to be perfectly honest four stars for a cop thriller it's pretty rare for me so I highly highly recommend the series I loved reading it and it was so so much fun then I buddy read Dawn by Ellie Wiesel with Dane over at Dane Reads we'll link him down below I gave this four stars this is a sequel to Ellie Wiesel's Night which was a memoir of his time in Auschwitz during the Holocaust I really enjoyed this book. This is a fictional novel. It's not another memoir, which was kind of interesting and different. I wasn't expecting that going in. But this tells the story of Alicia, Elisha. I should have looked up how to pronounce that. I will do that before I do a full review on this book. But it tells the story of this man who was in the Holocaust. He survived. He first went to France after the Holocaust and then he was recruited to go to what was Palestine and British occupied Palestine at the time to join an Israeli terrorist group. This story covers one night when one of the members of the terrorist group, the Israeli terrorist group, has been captured by the British and is going to be put to death hanged at dawn. As retaliation, Elisha is going to kill a British soldier at the same time and this book is just mostly his introspections and reflections on his life and I found it really fascinating and I think Elie Wiesel is a wonderful writer. I don't think this was as powerful as Night for me. Night really hit me so hard emotionally because it was a true story and it was really what Elie Wiesel went through but I think this book was very powerful in a different way and it was just fascinating and his writing style is just so so beautiful. I think Dana and I plan to read the next one in December sometime so definitely looking forward to finishing out the trilogy. Then I read Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. I buddy read this with Grace from A Beautiful Bookworm who I will link down below. I gave this four stars. This is a young adult fantasy novel about a queendom in which there are three queens born 
every generation. And those three queens, once they turn 16, have to fight each other. And whoever survives becomes queen. One of them is a poisoner, one of them is a naturalist, and one of them is an elemental, and they all have some sort of magical ability to go along with their gift. I had a lot of problems with this one. I really enjoyed the story and just the overall plot and like what was happening in the world. I found it very fascinating, but I did have some issues with the character development and the pacing of this book was very off. And the world did focus so, so heavily on tradition. And it would be like, oh, this is happening because of tradition. And I get that that has to be like a thing in fantasy novels to some degree, because it's not our world. And like, things are greatly built off of tradition. But it would just be so many illogical things in this book. Like, why did these three queens have to kill each other? Because tradition. And like, that was just the answer to so many questions. And it kind of did irritate me a little bit. Also, the pacing. I have heard many people call this first book slow and be like, oh yeah, it's really slow and then it gets good at the end. And I don't think that's entirely accurate. Um, I understand what people are saying and it did bother me as well. I don't think it's slow because I really love slow books. I love when books just delve so deeply into like every intricacy that's happening. But this book didn't do that. It's told in three perspectives, basically. It flips between the queens. So we'll have one chapter with the Poisoner Queen, and then one chapter with the Naturalist Queen, and then one with the Elemental Queen. They would say something was going to happen, like, oh, we're going to teach this queen how to like flirt so that she can win over all the suitors. And I was like, okay, interesting. That'll be fun because she's been basically a shut-in and abused her whole life. And then we would get a chapter on the next queen and then the next queen. And by the time we got back to the queen who was going to learn how to flirt, she was already like 80% of the way to learning how. And I found that kind of frustrating. It was just, it just felt like we didn't get to see a lot. We would, they would say things that were going to happen and they would just skip to when they were happening. And I didn't love that. But the ending was amazing and made me really want to pick up the next book immediately, which I haven't done yet, but definitely will soon. So I would recommend this. Um, I'm very interested to see where it goes because if the next book doesn't improve on this. I don't think I might not be as generous with my four stars because I was kind of settling in on three stars until the ending made me like super interested in the rest of the series and that pushed it over for me. But very interested to see where it goes. And the last book I read was Penance by Kane Minato, which I buddy read with Cozy Reader Kelly. This is a Japanese thriller about three girls who essentially witness the murder of their friend when they were 10 years old. A man shows up and takes their friend away and they let him do this and then hours later they discover her body and he has raped and murdered her. This book deals with the psychological trauma of that 15 years later and what they're doing at 25 and how this murder has affected their lives. Also I said three friends, I meant four. There were four of them plus the girl who was killed. But it was really, really interesting. I gave it four stars. I don't know how much I would really call this a thriller generally because it was a lot more introspective and just based on like these reflections and what happened to them. And it was so fascinating to delve into all these characters and these people who were so different but all affected by the same thing. And I really, really enjoyed it. I do think the storytelling itself was a bit strange because all of them were addressed to the mother of the girl who was killed because she had threatened them years earlier and said like, you have to atone for this or bad things will happen to you, I guess, which they were kids when she threatened them. So it had a big impact on them. And it was just interesting to read this book and see where it went and see everything that they did because of this murder and the things it led to. The real crux of this story, the thing that started all the events wasn't the murder itself, but it was the mother of their murdered friend threatening them and saying, you have to atone. You must have some sort of penance. And I really, really enjoyed that. I would say if you're looking for like a thriller thriller, this is probably not the greatest book just because it doesn't have that vibe to it that I usually get from thrillers, but it was so dark and so fascinating. And if you're interested in more of like an introspective kind of thriller, I highly recommend because I thought it was really, really wonderful and I got through this in no time at all. I'm so close to being out of battery on my camera, so I was kind of trying to fly through the last couple. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, if you're interested in any of these. As always, I really love to talk about the books that I have read because I really enjoyed all of them. I don't think I had a single bad one this month apart from Crack Hours, which I think was the worst thing that I read this month, which is unfortunate because of how much I love Crack Hour. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.